In this video, we're going to talk about the center of gravity and where this center of gravity has to be located. So let's start with the wing. So we have the wing and we have the center of gravity. So where should I put this center of gravity? So if we have a flat plane, there are two main locations for the center of gravity. The first location is in front of the center of pressure. So the center of pressure is the area where we have zero momentum acting on the airfoil. And the second allocation is behind the center of pressure. So which location should we choose? So uh, first let's assume we have the center of gravity behind the center of pressure. So it can be located anywhere. So unfortunately if we have this location uh, we have the pitch up momentum acting on the wing. And this momentum wants to pitch up airplane about the center of gravity. Not a good situation. So let's look at this uh, in more details. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, we have uh, computed this beautiful graph. Uh, so the graph is obtained from the simulation. The actual data were obtained with X foil, and then the momentum was plotted. So what uh, we have for this uh, in this image. So basically, you can choose any point. Uh, along the cord and then you can divide this airfoil in two sections. The first section is the nose section, so let's say the division line is going here. So the first section is the nose section and the second section is the tail section. So each section creates the momentum which can be measured at this point. So one momentum is directed upwards and the second momentum is directed downwards. And the resulting force is plotted here. So we have the point of center of pressure. Center of pressure is where the momentum is actually zero. And we can note that uh, the center of pressure is moving uh, uh, towards the leading edge. So when we go uh, from alpha equal to one degree, the blue line, to alpha equal to seven degrees, the red line. So the momentum goes to that direction, from blue to red. And uh, the center of point actually is moving to, to the nose. Now, if we imagine that we have the center of gravity placed behind the center of pressure, there are a few observations we can make. So, the first observation is that the force, the momentum itself, is actually growing. So, what, if we increase the alpha from 1 degree to 7 degrees, so you note that momentum uh, is increasing. So it goes higher and higher and you have stronger and stronger force or momentum acting uh, on this airfoil about this uh, uh, point of center of gravity. So this is not good. So meaning that uh, when you increase the alpha, let's say, you go from alpha 1 to alpha 2 degrees, you have a stronger force which actually tries to move it even further, further and it uh, goes to the next alpha and so on and so on. So we have progressively increased the momentum with respect to the alpha. In other words, we have the runaway situation and the plane will eventually flip. It's very hard to resist when you have stronger, stronger force trying to flip you. Eventually you're going to have the high alpha and you're going to have separation of the floor and the plane is going to drop from the skies. So this situation is not good and we have to entirely uh, take it out from the consideration. So the position of the center of gravity, we should not consider this position behind the center of pressure. So the second option is to place the center of gravity in front of the nose, in front of the leading edge of the airfoil. So now is the pitch up momentum is out of the picture and we look at the pitch down momentum. So this, this uh, force is going to try to uh, actually put the plane nose down. And now let's look at the picture in more details. So if we have this center of gravity behind the aerodynamic focus, focal point, so here's the point at which we have the constant momentum at different alphas. So if we have it positioned here and we look at the uh, how the momentum is changing this uh, change of alpha and because we have the pitch down momentum we look at the high alpha first so let's assume we, we fly at high alphas and then this momentum tries to uh, put the plane down so the alpha is dropping 
So if the alpha is dropping, uh, we know that the, we have a smaller force. So the, the force is progressively diminishing. So opposite to the previous case, when the force was growing with increase of alpha, in that case when you drop the alpha, the force is dropping. And this is good because it's not a runaway condition. Uh, but if you're going to put the center of gravity in the position between the aerodynamic focus focal point and the center of pressure, I put it here, I zoom in. So if you put it somewhere in this range, so what you're going to see, we're going to see the opposite effect. So when the alpha is dropping, so it goes from, red, from the red to blue color, the force is increasing. So higher and higher force is acting on this uh, airfoil and tries to pitch it down. So this is not good. Except uh, uh, besides that we have the moving center of pressure. So the center of pressure is moving from the high alpha, a red color, to the blue color, small alphas. And when the center of pressure is moving, it increasing the position from the center of gravity, which is here. So it's uh, increasing the distance from the center uh, from the center of gravity to the center of pressure, meaning that the leverage is increasing. So the momentum grows. Uh, momentum is growing because we have two effects. Effects. So the first effect is that uh, the momentum force is increasing due to the position of uh, both momentum curves. So we go from the red to blue and we have the strong momentum and uh, stronger force. And uh, the second reason is that we have increasing leverage. So the force and le leverage is increasing, so the momentum is increasing significantly. So we, we do have the runaway situation in this case. Meaning that uh, the airplane is uh, really wants to kind of go nose down. And uh, the smaller the alpha is, the more it wants to to fly directly to the ground. So this is not good. So from this uh, kind of picture uh, we can see that uh, you have to put your center of gravity far far away from the center of pressure and maybe after the aerodynamic focus. So it has to be a bit away from the nose. But I think that if you put it a bit closer, like maybe somewhere here, but not too close because it's going to change the momentum significantly. The position close to the center of pressure is going to affect the momentum. So if you put it somewhere here, close to the nose tip, it should probably, probably be fine. Uh, maybe you're going to have less stable plane, which is ready to go down, but uh, I think it should be fine maybe okay uh, so this is the position of momentum and uh, now we can just summarize that uh, uh, <clears throat> the momentum should be placed the center of gravity has to be placed in front of the leading edge of the airfoil and we're going to have a pitch down momentum acting on this uh, airplane so now we have to talk about the negative side so the negative side is that once we have placed the center of gravity at the nice stable position, uh, we have not zero force, uh, not zero momentum acting on this uh, airplane about, and about the center of gravity. So we have this momentum and this momentum has to be cancelled because otherwise the, the plane is not going to be stable. It's going to fly, fly, fly to the ground right away. So this momentum has to be uh, cancelled and we can do it in two different ways. So the first way is to add second airfoil, but uh, acting in opposite direction. So we go down here and look at this uh, this picture. And here is the inverse airfoil. So now we have the equal force acting in the opposite direction. So we have the force lifting force from the first airfoil, and we have the force acting downwards in the opposite direction from the second airfoil. So at this position the plane is uh, rock rock stable. However, it's not going to fly anywhere because we have uh, the same force of cycling in opposite directions. So the total lift is uh, zero. So how to uh, solve this problem? 
Well, what we care about is uh, the momentum, uh, not the force. And for the momentum, it's, it's, uh, there are two parts of the picture. So the first part is the force and the second part is the leverage. So if we're going to increase the leverage, we can uh, reduce the, uh, the force. So if you put this uh, foil somewhere here, I can have a small, smaller force. So let's make it smaller. So I can have a smaller force. And uh, the total lift, uh, the total force is the lift force because we, if you combine the, those two forces, you're going to have the net lift force. But the momentum is going to be cancelled because in that case you have higher, fo a stronger force but a shorter arm, and in that case you have a smaller force but longer arm. So you, you're going to have zero momentum total, and still going to have the the net lift force present. So what can you do? Uh, you can actually put this thing a bit uh, far away because you would like to reduce this force uh, as much as possible. So why do we want to do it? Uh, because of the polars. So here is the graph which shows the dependence, uh, the connection between lift coefficient and drag coefficient. So if you would like to have uh, small drag, you have to have small lift coefficient. Like in this graph, if you have high lift coefficient, like for instance for this, uh, for this uh, airfoil, then you're going to end up with a uh, huge drag coefficient. So you don't want to do it, uh, but uh, you have to do it because you need lift. But for this airfoil, it actually acts in the opposite direction. So it wants to put the plane down. It's, it's not useful. It does not create any useful work. So you would like to reduce uh, this uh, force so that you're going to have small drag. So you want to have the lift coefficient very small here, so that you're going to have very tiny drag from this airfoil. So that's why it's a good idea to uh, actually to move it a bit further away from the main airfoil. So let's let's put it somewhere here. And then we're going to have teeny tiny force. So the small force is acting on this airfoil and it does not create a significant drag because of those small graphs. And uh, the system is balanced now because the momentum from this airfoil is equivalent to momentum from that airfoil, so we can remove this arrow. So the plane is in the perfect uh, equilibri equilibrium. And uh, from the first principles, we have invented the conventional airplane. So uh, here is the airplane and here is the main airfoil, the red one, and here is the secondary airfoil acting in the opposite direction. So the plane is in the perfect equilibrium and the center of gravity is uh, located somewhere close to the nose. And the design is smart and highly efficient. Now let's talk about the second airfoil. So how to get the airfoil with uh, a small lift? Lift is directed in the opposite direction, but you still have the lift. So how to have, how to make it uh, small? Because we would like to reduce the drag. So we'd like to have a small lift from the secondary airfoil. Well, uh, being a simple person, you might think, well, I will make the wing, uh, this wing shorter. But actually, it's going to have the opposite effect, because you're going to have small aspect ratio and you're going to have huge induced drag. So we have the vortices created on the back. So this is not an option. Actually, uh, you would like to have this wing as close to infinity as possible to be highly efficient and to reduce the drag. Uh, so here is the, for instance, the airfo uh, airfoil graph, and here is the wing airfoil, uh, the wing uh, polar curve. So we see that for the wing we have definitely uh, high high drag, and we're going to approximate the curve from the two-dimensional airfoil if we extend this uh, wing to infinity. Uh, so this is not an option. So what can we do about this? So the second option, you can choose the airfoil with small uh, lift and small drag. This is an option. Or you can play with uh, the alphas. So let's say uh, for the primary link, we would, like, we would like to have a high alpha. Should rotate it a bit. But uh, we can lift leave this, uh, this airfoil uh, unchanged, so we're going to have alpha close to zero, and that's why we're going to have small uh, lift coefficient and small drag as a result. And now let's make sure that this configuration is stable. 
So if you increase the alpha a bit, uh, we have the pitching down moment on, from this air foil. So we increase the alpha, it's not going to change anything. We still have the pitch down moment. How about this air foil? For this air foil, if the alpha is positive for this air foil, for this air foil, alpha is negative. So why? Think about it. So it has to be, uh, it becomes negative, so meaning that the force becomes uh, smaller, so that the pitching down momentum from the primary uh, wing is going to put the nose down. So it's going to act in opposite direction. If you have the alpha negative in that case, so what we have this in, on this secondary airfoil, we have the positive alpha because we have uh, the opposite effect, and because of that, we have a stronger force. And the stronger force is going to uh, so the momentum from the secondary foil is going to be higher than the momentum from the primary one. So it's going to put the plane back to the normal position. So as we can see, this uh, plane has a very stable configuration. It does, does not want to go uh, to the high alpha, goes back right away because of the primary airfoil. So the primary airfoil is the one which moves plane to the uh, pitch down and always try to uh, put the nose down. This is good. And uh, the secondary airfoil is uh, for uh, correcting airplane when it goes go to the nose down position. So it's going to uh, pitch up the plane if it goes down. This thing is very stable. So it does not want to go up or it does not want to go down. So the two airfoils work in opposite direction and uh, always uh, we have the situation when we have the stable flight. And now let's assume that you don't like this beautiful plane design and you would like to have your plane as short as possible for known only to your reasons. So you would like maybe short things or whatever. So you would like to make it as short as possible. So what you do, you move the tail close to the main airfoil. So you move it as close as possible, even closer. So in that case, what is going to happen is uh, the momentum is not anymore in equilibrium. So this beautiful design goes away and we have this strange configuration. Uh, so this momentum is high and this momentum is, uh, is small, so the plane wants to pitch down. So what you do in that case? You try to reduce this force, so you move your center of gravity as close to the nose as possible. And uh, we remember from the previous discussion that uh, you cannot actually put the center of gravity too close to the center of pressure because the plane is going to be unstable. So you like to have your center of pressure here. Maybe uh, here's the, the final position, but you still move it closer and closer to the center of pressure, making the plane unstable. Maybe it's going to fly, but uh, I would personally keep away from this range, stay somewhere there, but you move it here. So you move it as close as you can to the, uh, to the nose, to the tip of the nose, uh, so that the force is going to be a bit lower. But still, it's not sufficient. You have to increase this force to balance to balance this configuration. And what this means that uh, this plane is going to have uh, significant drag because you increase the drag because you have increased the lift. Uh, so this is the plane, and uh, now you have second brilliant idea. So let's just put those two airfoils into one single airfoil. So you have this airfoil. So now you see that you have the re reflex airfoil, so you have first airfoil here and the second airfoil is there. And you have this very short and small place between uh, those two airfoils. So really the momentum is kind of almost, almost the same arm for the momentum from the first primary airfoil and the secondary airfoil. So you have to have strong force, lift force on the back. Of your airfoil and that's why you have highly inefficient plane because you have huge drag related to the huge lift so you go to the high lift and you see that you have high drag coefficient but well this is the design and here is the plane that you have chosen to fly very short plane there is no tail for whatever reason we don't like tails uh, so this is the reflex airfoil on this plane 
and uh, now we have to think about how to uh, choose the airfoil for this device so what you do you go to the database and you choose uh, the S profile reflex profile for this airplane and we have done the tests already so here is the test for the conventional airfoil NACA 0012 and you see that uh, the aerodynamic focus is far away from the tip of the nose, uh, from the tip of the airfoil. And then we have the flying wings airfoil. So those are the S profile airfoils. You can kind of see the S shape here on the tail. And you do uh, see the, that this point is moving close to the nose tip. So you can put your uh, center of gravity close to the nose tip. That's what you need because we like to. Uh, reduce the momentum, the pitch down momentum. Here the second airfoil, uh, the same picture, so you do can put, uh, you, you uh, can put the center of gravity closer to the center of pressure. In comparison to the standard, uh, original uh, standard NACA airfoil, it's far away from the nose. So this is good, because we can uh, reduce the momentum, but this momentum is still present. So if you look at the momentum curves, uh, so this is the NACA airfoil, and here is the flying airfoil. The momentum is a bit smaller, like 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So you have uh, two times less the momentum, but you do still have the momentum. So those S uh, shape airfoils, they do not cancel the momentum. You still have the momentum. So you have to uh, fight with this momentum using your flaps. And if you use your flaps, you're, you're going to have actual different airfoil, airfoil completely. So this airfoil is not uh, flyable the airfoil with flap, flaps deflected which are going to cancel the momentum is actually the, the right airfoil and if you look at the performance of this airfoil with flaps deflected then you will see that this is kind of not a good not a good airfoil at all the efficiency is very low you might have a good efficiency for this airfoil but once you deflect your flaps to cancel the momentum then you have terrible performance and of course nobody wanna do the airfoil with zero momentum because if you look at the numbers you will see that this is total garbage so that that's why those airfoils kind of looks fine but uh, when they are put at the flying position with the flaps deflected then it's not as good anymore so this is the reason why uh, we don't like kind of so the idea of for using this uh, kind of airfoil to combine those two is a, it's a good idea I think but the implementation will actually result in not efficient airfoil and not official airplane so this is not the option for, for the plane having this plane is, is not a good idea because you're going to have center of gravity very close to the center of pressure it's not good and then you have to have uh, highly inefficient airfoil to cancel down the momentum so Personally, I think that this this uh, thing has to be forgotten, and we should move to a smarter design. So this airplane goes to garbage. Uh, the reflex airfoil, I think, is not a good idea too because you cannot fly it. You have not zero momentum, so you have to deflect your flaps, and then. Uh, what is the difference between the average usual airfoil? You can deflect your flaps on any, any airfoil. So you have to prove the, that this reflex airfoil with flaps deflected is better than the average usual type of airfoil. So we put this to the garbage can as well because it's not proven that we have advantage by using this airfoil. So use usual, usual airfoil from the database and uh, the best from the database and then use your flaps and forget about these strange designs. Okay, so garbage can is full and now let's look at the good design so here is the short plane well not not so short after all because you have uh, the wings deflected backwards but what we have for this uh, for this plane is that the lifting force is distributed uh, along the wing and we have the central maybe if you take the average force you will get the center for this force somewhere in the in the center of the wing, so we're going to have the lifting force over here. And the center of gravity can be placed closer to the nose, somewhere there. 
and as a result what you're going to have you're going to have uh, the center of gravity placed away from the center of pressure which is going to be uh, which is going to make plane more stable so this is good so the second good thing about this uh, airplane is that you have flaps so let's if you choose for instance the green uh, uh, position for the flaps then you uh, can easily move your tail backwards because uh, the force is going to be on the back so on the back somewhere here so you have a uh, high distance between the lift force and the force acting downwards to compensate the momentum and you also can put your center of gravity a bit close to the nose so you have a more stable configuration so this is a good idea and a good design and we can make it even better with the twist so let's assume we have a small twist at the tips of those wings and what it does it actually changes the angle of attack so if in this in this range you have the usual positive angle of attack so the very tip you can have a stronger force by moving this airfoil a bit down and that will increase the force so this force is needed to compensate the momentum pitch down momentum from this airfoil and we can have a stronger force at the very tips of this of this wing so we cannot use uh, uh, the flaps we can just uh, keep the initial position so we're going to have the profile as it uh, originally was designed and then we're going to have a small uh, twist on the back of the wing and the plane is going to be stable so this this is the uh, good design and it's almost as good as the airplane we have seen the conventional design of the airplane good stable configuration we have the tail effect on the tips of the wing because we have the twist we have uh, the nice distribution of center of gravity so it's not too close to the center of pressure and it's good to go so the design is good and we can move to the next option because we have uh, talk about only one possibility in this case uh, how to uh, compensate the momentum by using the opposite airfoil but there is also an option to use the positive airfoil so let's talk about this and here is the idea to put the same uh, wing but in front of the center of gravity so let's put it here and we have the same force acting on this airfoil on this wing and if the center of gravity is exactly located in between we have the same momentum uh, created by those wings but directed in the opposite uh, di direction so once I wants to uh, flip plane down, the second wants to flip plane up so we have the equilibrium position so it's all good but actually uh, we have now we doubled the lift because we have two uh, wings actually instead of one so they, they both great and useful work trying to lift the plane up but the, if you double the lift we actually double the drag as well so if you look at this figure if you double the lift you will double the drag so it's not a good uh, not a good situation uh, usually you should be able to do what you want to do with uh, a single wing you know it because those planes became obsolete so no longer in use uh, you have to basically build the second wing you have to uh, increase the mass of this plane and so on so the good idea is to have one wing which is uh, used for lift and second wing which is used for the control or equilibrium so from that point of view what we should do we should put this wing as far as we can in front of center of gravity and we can uh, reduce the lifting force as well because you, you have the longer arm so you should have the smaller force to be in the equilibrium with, with that wing so on this plane is going to be highly, highly maneuverable because uh, let's say we're going to change uh, the alpha so we're going to increase the alpha and you note that uh, th th those two wings are going to behave in the same way so for them it's not important at which uh, direction you're going so these wings try to pitch down the airplane as previously and these wings want to pitch 
pitched up. And because we have changed the alpha, the forces are stronger for, for that wing and for this one. The same if you are going to, to change alpha to negative value, the same, the same behavior from those two airfoils. So if you like to add some stability, then you might think about how to change the angle, uh, how to change the lift coefficient with respect to alpha for those two wings. So I have plotted this graph. So let's assume that the blue curve is corresponding to that wing. So we have the lift coefficient growing with alpha, almost linearly as usual. And uh, this uh, graph for the, this curve is for this wing. And if you look at this curve, uh, you see that the lift coefficient is increasing not as uh, significantly as uh, that one from that wing with respect to alpha. So if we're going to increase the alpha, we're going to increase uh, the pitching momentum stronger than the momentum which is trying to flip the wing uh, up. And that's why we're going to be in the stable uh, situation. So we're going to increase the alpha. So this uh, vector is going to increase significantly and that, that will not so much. So the, the, the wing is going to try to pitch the airplane down. And the opposite is true as well, if you go that direction. So the alpha is uh, going to the negative value. So that uh, wing is producing less lift. And that one is producing more lift. So in that case, uh, this configuration will try to uh, put the plane back to the original position. So basically you have to play with uh, the profiles and to choose the one which is going to give you the right results. Or alternatively what you can do, you can maybe change the angle of attack of this wing. So let's increase this uh, alpha for the first wing. And now what happens if you go to the high alpha, like the system goes to the high alpha, so this wing is going to start losing lift. So I'm going to reach this point and then the lift is going to drop. But that wing will continue to uh, increase the lift. So eventually it's going to pitch down the airplane and the plane goes to the original position. In the opposite case, when we go to the negative alpha, so we see that this wing still has the alpha higher than zero, so it's going to preserve the lift force, whereas that wing is not going to have the lifting force. It's going to drop to zero on negative numbers. So in that way, uh, this wing is going to eventually pull the plane back to the normal position. And hence, we have the stability for this configuration. However, we might have small inconvenience if we fly at high alphas. So at high alphas, what you might eventually get, you might get this position where the lift coefficient is dropping to zero. When you have the force, force operation, in that case, uh, there is no lift anymore and nothing will stop the pitching down momentum from uh, flying this plane down to the ground. So you might have a small or big crash when you start your flight or when you go for the landing. Always make sure that you are aware of your alphas and you do not uh, reach the critical values. So you maintain the sufficiently high speed so that alphas are not very high and you're not going to end up with the full separation from the airfoil. Uh, the, the plane actually do exist using this configuration. And for instance, uh, this plane from the World War II from Japan. It's a beautiful plane, beautiful design. So here I have more pictures of this plane. So you have a uh, main wing and you have the wing which is uh, keeping the balance, acting against the pitching down moment. And the good thing about this plane is that uh, you don't have the force acting downwards. So all the energy is used to lift the plane up. So it's a very smart and efficient way to use uh, your energy.